Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles and welcome to an overlapping generation struggle. It's part of the advanced macro struggles where we're going to start talking about the overlapping generations model. Similar to how I talk about other models, it's going to be in a couple of parts. This is part one where we're going to talk about the setup of the overlapping generations model. And in this video, all I want to do is I want to help you understand how the OLG model, the overlapping generations model is set up. Sort of the background, the intuition for the setup and then we're going to derive the OLG equilibrium. And then the next couple of videos, we'll start tackling equilibrium, solving for equilibrium, talking about fiscal policy, all of those fun things. But today is just the setup. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So of course, we're talking about a macro model, which means we're going to feature Bill. So in this world, Bill lives for two periods. We're going to call it young and old, or if that's not as helpful, you can think of the first period of Bill's life as sort of like working age. This is when he's working and he retires when he's old. And what he's going to get, and he's going to get an income or an endowment in both periods. So again, if you're thinking young and old or working age and retired, maybe when he's young, he gets a wage. And maybe when he's retired, he gets a pension or social security. Now, that's not to say that in this current version of the model, we're going to have Bill choose how much to work. We're just going to assume he works. We're going to assume he gets an income some way, somehow. And I think just saying that it falls from the sky in every period starts to get a little old. So if that's not as helpful, again, you can think about Bill getting a wage in his young days and a social security or pension in his old days. Regardless of how you think about it, in every period, Bill gets to choose consumption, which we'll call C. It's going to have a utility function, some U of C. And what he can do when he's young, he can put some of that income that he gets when he's young into the bank. He can buy some stocks, he can buy some bonds, he can buy whatever assets that exist in this economy. So we'll just call them A assets. And that is what he can do to save and have a little extra income when he's old. So that's what we have. We have consumption, we have utility, we have assets. And so now let's talk a little bit more about why this is called the overlapping generation model. And so now let's talk about why this is called the overlapping generation model. And so to do that, we're gonna look at Bill's family tree. And so at time zero, Bill was young. He was a young lad. And then in time one, because Bill only lives for two periods, he's in his olden days. But when he's in his olden days, the next generation is going to overlap with him. And so Bill Jr. or Bill II is going to be young when Bill is old. And then when Bill Jr. becomes old, Bill has died because he only lives for two periods. But Bill III is young. And so they're going to overlap right here. And then it's just going to keep going throughout time. So it's called overlapping generations because except for period zero, there's always two generations alive at the same time. And in theory, these two generations could trade with each other and try and spread consumption amongst themselves. We'll talk about in the next couple of videos why we don't think that's necessarily going to happen. You might start to imagine why that doesn't happen. We're going to talk about it explicitly, but just for now, this is why it's called the overlapping generations model, because as you can see from this picture, generations overlap. So now that we know why it's called the overlapping generations model, let's return to Bill and think about Bill's problem over the course of his two period life. Well, when Bill the first or the original Bill is alive, he is choosing how much he consumes when he's young, when he's old, and he also gets to choose how much he wants to save when he's young for when he's old. So this is like how much he wants to put in his retirement account when he's young, to have available when he's old. And so his utility is just a two period utility. We'll have this present discount factor beta. And so really it's just U of CY or the utility when he's young plus beta times the utility when he's old because Bill is making these decisions when he's young. And so we have some constraints. The first constraint is that the amount that Bill eats when he's young plus the amount of assets he purchases for retirement needs to be equal to the income or the endowment he gets when he's young. Similarly, when he's old, the amount that he eats when he's old needs to be whatever retirement or income or endowment he gets when he's old, social security or pension, plus the interest rate times the assets that he put away when he was young. So this is like when he cashes out his retirement account from when he's young, so you can use it when he's old. And the other thing that needs to be true is of course, that the amount he eats when he's young plus the amount when he's old needs to be equal to the total endowment that he had when he was both young and old. So that's any Bill's problem. That's a Bill problem for any generation. I'm just using the original Bill because it's easy, but this is what Bill's problem is. And now that we know the setup, now that we know Bill's problem, 
we can define the overlapping generation's competitive equilibrium. So the OLG equilibrium is an allocation because remember, anytime we talk about competitive equilibrium, it's always an allocation given prices that solves the maximization or minimization problem and satisfies market clearing. And we're just applying that definition to an OLG model. So it's an allocation where every period you choose how much people eat when they're young, how much they put away into retirement, how much the old people eat from T equals zero to infinity. Given prices, in this case, our prices are really just our interest rate. And it's got to satisfy the maximization problem that we just talked about for all generations. And it also has to satisfy market clearing. So this is the market clearing condition that we talked about before with Bill. This condition right here, for example, maybe it's the case that Bill, the second, when he's young, he's going to borrow $10. Let's suppose that he borrows $10. Well, he can't borrow $10 from thin air. So what has to be the case is that means that Bill the first, when he's old, has to lend $10 because now the total assets are zero because these $10 cancel each other out. And so what that means is the assets for retirement overall have to be zero because we have to balance. Everyone who's borrowing has to find someone to lend them the money. They can't just borrow from thin air and they can't just lend money to no one. They have to lend money to someone and they have to borrow from someone. And that's all that this condition means. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more idea of the setup of an overlapping generations model. In the next couple of videos, we'll start diving into solving the overlapping generations model and talking about intuitive steps. But if this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.